You're just gonna jizz in me and then that's it? Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today I'm gonna be taking a look at something that everybody else seems to have already talked about and I am very late to the game. This is the CJRB Pyrite, except this version is one that you haven't seen yet. This one is the full titanium button lock with the Damascus blade. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a little confused about a few things on this knife. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot this intro here, talk to you for just a couple of minutes, and uh, I have shot off an email to Artisan Cutlery, which is the parent company for CJRB, with a couple of questions that hopefully I can get some good answers to so I can give you the background that you're going to need to decide if this is going to be the knife for you. Now, everybody, and I mean everybody that I have seen review these knives, has gone bonkers for it, and I don't really get it. I understand that the fact that the steel version and the G10 versions and the Micarta versions are like $50 and they're getting a lot more than they bargained for at that $50 price, but this is more than double that price. This is about $120 in the Damascus. And from my initial impressions from unboxing this, I don't know how many people are going to justify the extra expense by adding this Damascus blade. When I look this knife over, it's, it's a really small knife. And I don't mean that it's meant to be a micro knife, like something like an EMP EDC Nimble. That knife is very, very tiny. It's much smaller than this, but it's wider and it fills the hand a little bit better and it somehow feels more substantial than this does. And then I look at the Damascus blade and I'll just leave it at this. I had to ask a few questions via email about the Damascus before I come out and do the tabletop, give you the close-ups and actually start doing the review on it. Because if I have these questions, there's a very good chance that you will as well. And I will break down those questions individually in the review section of this video so that you hopefully get the answers that you're looking for. So again, um, CJRB being a budgetary division of artisan cutlery allows people to get into some designs that they may not otherwise be able to, I don't want to say afford because I have no idea what your budget is, but let's say you're a multi-billionaire, you can afford everything, that you have to justify the money that you're spending. So I think that this brand offers a lot of knife for the money in most of their designs when somebody can't justify spending more. And let's face it, artisan cutlery themselves, they don't really make a lot of expensive knives to begin with. The only artisan cutlery knife I have ever reviewed was the Todd Bag Citadel. And while that one, I believe, topped out their price range, was it around four, four fifty, somewhere around there? Um, that's still not a very expensive knife in today's day and age for most collectors, especially if you're a collector that's been watching my channel for any length of time, then you've been exposed to tremendously more expensive knives, and that may be where your interests lie. So you may not even look at knives that are $50 or $120 or $200 because they're not, not probably going to give you what it is that you're looking for out of the knives that you purchase when you're accustomed to buying higher end knives with higher end materials with impeccable fit and finish and incredible actions. I will say this as an initial impression. The action on this knife is pretty darn good. Is it as great as, I mean, I'm, I'm, oh man. I've come across a lot of videos about the Pyrites and people are just losing their shit over them. And I don't get that. I, I don't, it's not a bad knife. I'm not saying that. I just don't see all the praise. There was even one video where the person, in the title of the video, it says, better than a Sabenza. So of course, I clicked that right away going, I need to see what kind of grade A shit this guy is smoking. 
but it was the title was simply in reference to a series that he does on his channel where he basically compare knives, basic knives to Sabenzas and says, hey, is it better than a Sabenza or not? Is it worth your time trying to get into one? So he didn't say this was better than a Sabenza. But as I watched the video, he he had a really hard time telling you that this was not nearly as good as a Sabenza. And no, it's it's it is not in that league. This is a hundred dollar knife. And aside from the Damascus blade, I don't see it reaching any further above the $100 knife category. It is nice and flickable. It's got a nice action to it. The tension on the button lock is just about perfect. And it's not one of those that you have to push forever and ever and ever and ever for it to get it to, uh, to unlock. I like the fidget factor of it. Like I said, the action is pretty good. And uh, like with any other button lock, if you don't get the pressure off of the button in time, you'll get some blade bounce as it, as it closes, hits the blade stop, and uh, bounces back out like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, which is why I don't have a lot of button locks in my collection. And the ones that I've always liked the most were made by Brian Ty in his custom knives. And you don't... I've never really had that blade bounce with his. That pivot and, and everything is tuned just the right way where it's not so free-falling that it's going to bounce like that. See? Now, that's a timing thing. If you get off the button quick enough, you don't have to worry about it. But there's going to be that time. You're fidgeting with the knife. You're screwing around with it. You didn't pay attention and it bounced back up, then you let go of the button, and it just kind of sits there, and you end up stabbing yourself. That's the problem when we sit here and fidget with knives and play with knives. If you're just using the knife and then putting it away, you're probably not going to experience that issue. So, anyway, let's get into the tabletop review. I'm going to take a few pictures right now, and hopefully by the time I get to the tabletop portion when I want to film it, I will have received the email back answering the few questions that I had regarding the brand, regarding the knife, regarding the steel being used for the blade. And uh, we'll continue on from there. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this up close and personal. And I had mentioned in the intro there uh, last week when I filmed it, um, that I had fired off an email back over to CJRB or, or Artisan Cutlery and had a few key questions for the video just to make sure that I was giving a well-rounded presentation. That is a focus of mine. I try to give more information than everybody else does. And hopefully get some questions answered that I didn't have an answer for readily and I wanted to make sure that I didn't misrepresent the brand. Well, I've waited a week, and unfortunately, I have heard nothing back. So I'm going to go over the knife as best as I can. Then I'm going to show you guys the email, show you the questions that I had, because you're probably going to still have the same questions that I did. And maybe by the end of this video, because it's not going to be a very thrilling video, it's not going to be very exciting, uh, maybe by the end of the video... Uh, the gentleman that works in the, I guess it's marketing that, that I was dealing with, they will learn to start replying to emails, whether it be a customer or a reviewer who's trying to disseminate proper information about their brand to make sure that if you've spent the time to send this knife out to me for review, let's do the follow-up so that you can get your money's worth for you know, sending out the knife and the postage and everything else that you went through to get it out to me. Um, you know, I, I don't want to come out here and, and leave things a mystery. That's no fun for me, no fun for the viewers, and I wouldn't think that it would benefit the brand very much. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I don't want this to be misconstrued as a negative review. So I want to reiterate what I had said earlier in the intro, that I don't get this knife. I don't get why so many people are going so apeshit over it. 
However, I understand when you're buying into the standard steel frame G10 or micarta versions where you're spending $65, $50, $45, that the people reviewing them are excited because in that price point, there's almost nothing that's really worth talking about, certainly not worth reviewing. So I get why, through that lens, why they may be excited. But that also made me think, well, there's something about this knife that I'm really going to enjoy. Is it going to be the ergonomics, the balance? Is it going to be the action? Am I going to feel the same magic that everybody else has felt with the Pyrite model in general? Taking away the speciality, the limited editionness of the titanium frame and the quote-unquote Damascus blade. I was hoping that there would be something that I would latch on to in this video and go, wow, I'm really impressed by this thing, whatever that thing may have been, and been able to focus on that. Instead, what I've got here is an absolutely underwhelming pocket knife. There is nothing special about this knife. I just don't get why so many people have been raving. I don't know... Uh, Everybody that's reviewed it, obviously. I've watched a few videos of people that have done so. I don't know if they were paid to do the reviews. I don't know if they had affiliate links where they get money whenever you order a knife through the link that you're clicking or what. Or they're just such a fan of the brand that they want to make sure that they're in the rotation to always review their products in the future. And they don't want to miss out on that by by knocking the knife. I don't know. I, I don't understand it. I don't know if any of my YouTube knife review friends have reviewed this, like Metal Complex or Lefty EDC. If they have, I apologize. I'm not lumping you into this because I, I haven't seen videos done by either one of them. But I, I don't get it. I don't understand the fascination. This is a very basic button lock with nothing special about it. Now, Basic, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a plain Jane titanium frame and no crazy design aspects. There's nothing wrong with that. There are plenty of plain Jane knives that I really, really love. As an example, one of my absolute favorite everyday carry knives is this plain Jane version of the Brian Brown Knives Jaeger M. And there have been a lot of variations of this knife. I had even purchased the all-black version that had the blue anodized pivot collar. And it I didn't like it as much as I liked this. So if it's plain or basic, that's not something that bothers me. I have a great respect for a clean design that doesn't need a bunch of extraneous bullshit to make it seem better than it really is. Uh, another one, and here's a, a, a good example of giving a comparison here visually, my Dan Carraher 904. This is the integral with the Dama steel blade, which is kind of the look they were going for here as far as bead blasted titanium against a Damascus, a shiny, what appears to be stainless Damascus. This is how it's done, folks. This has the wow factor. This is very expensive Dama steel. This was polished properly. It was etched properly. And it's just fantastic. So I'm not knocking it when I say that it's, it's very basic and just not special. I'm not talking about visually the fact that it's just bead blasted tie with Damascus. It just, it lacks any real wow factor. And maybe for $120, you shouldn't expect any wow factor. But if you have watched any reviews about the Pyrite in general, then you're expecting some wow factor because these people are acting like when they unbox it, somebody's hiding under the table and tickling them behind the balls. They're that excited about this knife. And I'm sorry, it's just, it, no, not in any way. The action isn't bad. It has taken all week to really break in and feel decent. 
and I could still feel I mean, there's there's no real major friction here, but I do feel the pattern of the Damascus, and I'm wondering if maybe they didn't mask off the friction areas of the steel before they etched it. Um, judging by the care that they didn't take in the finishing, um, I'm going to assume that that's probably the case without having to take the knife apart and look. And yes, I could be a more thorough reviewer by taking it apart and answering that question for myself. I apologize. I'm just not investing any more time in this knife. That's why you didn't see any photography on it. Um, the amount of photography that I do for my videos in general... Back before I ever did reviews and I was doing photography and getting contracted for photography, the amount of photos that I take for an average review would be something I would charge about $2,000 for as a photographer. I'm not investing $2,000 worth of my time to photograph a knife that is wholly uninspiring. Okay, now. Let's go ahead and get into the details of this knife. I'm going to pause this just for a second and come right back because I, I want to try cleaning this again. I want to make sure that this is not a byproduct of oil on the blade, which I'm thinking it might be because this blade came super, super oiled. Okay, and we are back. Now, it just, it doesn't clean up, which I'm going to explain to you what my theory is about that in a moment. I've used... Lacquer thinner, I've used Windex, and I've used KPL Knife Guard as a cleaner. And no amount of cleaning gets rid of the discoloration on this blade. And that's a damn shame. So if they're not going to put the time into doing decent finishing on the blade and possibly ruining the blade, which I'll discuss in a few minutes, then I'm not going to put more time into trying to clean it. I'm not going to bother with the TLDW because I really do want you to hear everything that I'm saying uh, throughout the course of the video and not just watch a uh, four or five minute part of it. So let's go ahead and go from uh, top to bottom on this. This is the CJRB Pyrite Titanium and Damascus Limited Edition. They retail for $120. And your specs are as follows. Overall length of 7.3 inches, blade length of 3.11 inches of Mystery Damascus, which is probably 9CR steel. I can't tell you for sure because they wouldn't bother to tell me. And this knife is so new, it's not listed on any retailer's websites just yet. I would have been the first person to upload this on YouTube if I had actually gotten the info that I needed in a timely manner. Uh, I've held on to this for over a week, and I'm just now getting around to it. I don't know. I just saw one video as I scrolled through YouTube. I just saw one person had reviewed this particular version. Maybe they've got more info than I do. Uh, feel free to go check them out. Your blade stock thickness is 110 thousandths thick. You've got a ceramic ball bearing pivot and a titanium frame. Now, Let's talk about that email that I keep mentioning. I'll pop it up here on the screen, and we'll go over it together line by line. It says, hi, Philip. The knife arrives safely. If you don't mind, I've got a few questions I'd like to bring up in the video. What is the main purpose of the CJRB brand? Why was the decision made to make a sub-brand off of Artisan Cutlery? Is CJRB an abbreviation for something? What does it stand for? What does it mean? In your initial emails to me, I apologize, I see I have a typo there. Damn autocorrect. It always turns in to I'm. I am. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you said Artisan was a U.S.-based brand, but the CJRB packaging says made in China. Now, I do want to show that to you here. I don't know if my camera is going to focus on something. There we go. That close to it. And here's where it gets further fuzzy for me. CJRB was born out of the desire to make the quality and performance of artisan cutlery products accessible to everyone without compromising on materials or construction. All CJRB knives are machined and assembled, excuse me, and assembled by the same team that works on our premium artisan cutlery line. Now, what does that mean to you? 
That last line there says, all of the CJRB knives are manufactured and assembled by the team at Artisan Cutlery. Now, Artisan Cutlery is a U.S.-made brand. However, this says made in China. That is China Steel. And I'm pretty sure if I were to, to take out all of the hardware and measure it, that, that would actually be all metric stuff. You can expect to see the same attention to detail and craftsmanship in every CJRB knife that you would find on any artisan cutlery piece. Boy, I sure hope not. The one experience I've had with an artisan knife, it was phenomenal. This is not. We have done everything possible to ensure that CJRB is a highly competitive force in the knife market dedicated to bringing only the best products to our fans and customers while keeping prices and options highly accessible. So that is marketing gobbledygook. That is word salad. Um, it's just a bunch of words strung together, and it really doesn't have any actual meaning. So you're saying in one part that the same people and the same machines that make a $200, $300, whatever, artisan cutlery knife in the United States is making a knife that is labeled made in China. Now, that could just be that the box is made in China, but typically, when that's the case, it will say box made in China. So I'm confused. Now, I didn't want to come out and misrepresent the brand or cast any doubt on the brand by saying, oh, saying all the things that I'm saying right now. That's why I emailed him to get the answer to that question. Yeah, and I even said that. I don't want to make any assumptions and misspeak while presenting your products. Do you have any interesting stories that people don't know about the development of the design? This is a common question that I ask almost every knife maker or every knife brand that I'm doing a review on because I don't want to just come out here and spout specs and show the knife. I want to give you some insight, some behind the scenes on the development or about the maker, or something like that. And uh, I didn't get an answer to that as well. Who makes the Damascus? Is it stainless Damascus or carbon? Also, is it actually Damascus? There is no pattern showing on the spine of the blade. This would appear when the steel was etched. There is no patterning whatsoever showing up in the spine of the blade. Now, there are a few reasons for that. Number one, there... Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't shill anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. There could be a layer of decarb on there that was not ground through that wouldn't allow the etch to take. Or if it's a, there are different types of Damascus where you need to stop at a certain grit. Otherwise, you're closing the pores of the steel too much and you're making it far more corrosion resistant and it's not going to react well to the etch. Uh, Chad Nichols, for example, on almost all of his Damascus, he, he tells you in his instructions to stop sanding at 400 grit. Meanwhile, something like uh, Mike Norris or Damasteel, you mirror polish those. But um, that, that could be another thing. It could be just something as simple as that, that they took this to maybe 600, 800 grit or 1,000 grit, and that's too fine, and it won't allow the pattern to etch. I don't know. I have to make guesses because I didn't get a reply. Now, let's take a look at the pattern. It's actually a nice looking pattern, but all this discoloration, what's bothering me the most is this straw color, wheat colored, deep yellow that's in it. Typically, that's going to happen if you've overheated the blade. 
Now, after you've done the heat treat, you're going to do the temper. Your temper will dictate how hot that knife can get while you're working it after the heat treat before you ruin the knife and make it where it won't hold an edge. So let's say, for example, this particular steel needs to be heat treated and then tempered at 400 degrees two times at two hours each. So 400 degrees is going to be your max that that steel can take when you're grinding it and when you're polishing it and buffing it and everything else. If you exceed that particular temperature that was used for temper, uh, you will now have reduced the life of this blade. It will not perform in the way that it was meant to. So when I see that much yellow, that deep, dark yellow, it alarms me. And this was most likely done during the buffing stage because they polished this particular blade. So it looks like there's a possibility that they have overheated this blade, making this blade junk, useless. So, yeah, that bothers me too. And that scares me away from not only this knife, but the brand in general. Now, mistakes can happen, and I understand that, especially in big production where they're likely making thousands and thousands of these knives. Mistakes can happen. Uh, whoever's working the buffer that day may have just had a bad day, wasn't paying attention, um, and he's got uh, too much pressure on there as, as he's buffing it out, or he's held it in place too long while he's putting pressure on it, and he has burned that blade. I don't know. And then I asked, when is the Damascus model releasing? I didn't see it listed anywhere online, so I assume it hasn't released yet. And if it's an exclusive to a certain retailer, uh, please let me know which ones. Because I would like to let you guys know, as you're watching this, where you can buy it. As of right now, there are no listings for it anywhere, so I can't help you with that. Um, and in case you can't tell, <laughs> I'm, uh, I wouldn't be suggesting that you buy it to begin with. Now, let's take the flaws of the finishing of the blade out of the equation. Let's take the fact that this material is a mystery material that may just be patterned in a way to look like Damascus, meaning uh, maybe they have some sort of laser etching process that makes this look like it might be Damascus. Because again, not having anything showing up on the spine is of grave concern to me. Um, but let's just talk about the pyrite in general. As I've said before, I, I just I don't see the excitement from so many other people. I don't know why everybody is losing their minds over this knife. It feels okay. I mean, it's, it's a little bit small for me, but that's just a size thing. There are plenty of knives that are available in m multitudes of sizes. You could buy a, a Benchmade Griptilian or a Mini Griptilian. You could buy a Para 2 or a Para 3. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can do that. I, I'm, I'm just not crazy about how it feels in the hand overall. And then you've got this hard intersection right here where the curved portion of the handle just stops and then this flat portion starts. You have a finger choil that is uh, neither a finger choil nor a sharpening notch. It's a little larger than a sharpening notch needs to be and it's smaller than a finger choil needs to be. So, and I don't mind not having a finger choil or a, not having a sharpening notch. I don't mind keeping my hand back on the handle. That's totally fine for me. There are plenty of really, really great designs out there where I cannot choke up on the blade, and it doesn't bother me at all. As a matter of fact, my beloved Jaeger M really can't choke up on that. I have to keep my fingers back here. On the non-flipper model, you've got a little bit of room right there that you could choke up on, but it wasn't something that I knocked on that knife. So, you know, just pick one or the other. Do a small little sharpening notch or do a larger exaggerated finger choil. That's all. The thumb studs are a little bit sharp for most consumers. Not a factor for me. It doesn't really bother me. I, I, all, I have all calluses and dead skin up here anyway, so that it's not really a thing for me. But I could see some people seriously complaining about it that may want to sit there and, and flick this knife over and over and over. 
and play with it as you should. That's your right. Um, and I think you would end up kind of tearing up your thumb a little bit or your finger if you're reverse flicking it. The pocket clip, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I feel about deep carry pocket clips and uh, simple bent spring clips. Neither one are going to be on a knife that I want to carry. So I just, it, it doesn't really impress me at all. And uh, they did a nice polish job on it. it. I believe this might be steel. I don't have a magnet near me to see if that's titanium or steel, but that could be steel. The, uh, the action is mediocre. It's nothing to write home about. This is not a Malibu. If you want to get a low-priced, really great button lock with a sick-ass action, you get a Protec Malibu. Which, by the way, also will for sure be made in the U.S. And uh, again, I, I don't have a problem with products made in China. Doesn't phase me at all. I do have a problem if you say it's made somewhere and it's actually made somewhere else. Yeah, I, I don't get what what other people are seeing in this design in the overall pyrite model. It just does it does nothing for me. And it's in no way, the model itself in no way is a bad knife. It's just not exciting. It's not worthy of all the hype that I keep seeing over and over and over on it. This particular version of this model, uh, because of the blade, um, I'm still not going to say it's a bad knife, but it could have issues. If the discoloration of the blade is due to the reason I think that it might be, because there are probably a myriad of, of explanations for that, if it's because of what I'm thinking, then yeah, uh, th this blade is trash and it's, it's, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna do its job, which is to be a knife, which is to cut. So again, I apologize that this came off as an overly negative review. I really do not like doing that. I will typically refuse to review something if once it gets in my hands, it's, it's just riddled with problems. But there needs to be something out there for CJRB to look at and go, oh, okay, we have some areas of opportunity. This knife is in no way a failure or anything like that, but there are areas of opportunity that you can take to make the knife better. And I hope that my feedback is looked at as constructive feedback. I'm not hating on the brand. I'm not hating on the knife. I don't like that I wasn't able to get the information required to do a proper review, so that's embarrassing for me after all these years of doing this, to come out here and go, well, I don't really know anything about this knife, but here it is. Um, and I don't like the fact that there is no information on the steel. I don't like that there is uh, really bad discoloration in the steel. It's just, it's, it's a bad omen, man. It's a bad omen. So I felt it was important to go ahead and uh, get this out there and make sure that it was seen. Hopefully the right people see it and make the corrections. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Sorry if the, the review came out to have a negative tone. I don't ever like doing that. That is not my intention to come out here and say bad things about a product. Um, but I'm also never going to come out here and sugarcoat shit either. I'm not going to lie and say something's great when it's not. It's just never who I've been. If I truly love the knife, you're going to know it. If the knife has some real solid good reasons for you to buy one, I will let you know them. If it's high value for the money spent, I will let you know that. But I'm also not going to shy away from letting you know the issues that may be present. And this is merely one example, by the way. I can't say that every single one of these is going to be like this. I mean, it's going to be underwhelming if you've been collecting knives for a while and have bought anything decent that I could pretty much say across the board. Yeah. All of them are going to be like that. But the uh, issues that I have here may, may be unique to this one example and may not reflect any other versions that may be out there available. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now and I'll see you on the next video.